Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Reproductive endocrinology, or fertility treatment, has changed rapidly over the last few years. But what has not changed is the experience of a dedicated team to help you achieve your goal of having a family. There is a balance between the physicians who perform the procedures and the dedicated team of laboratory staff that helps create these miracles. This video will take you behind the scenes of what we do to make these things happen. We're going right inside the operating room to see an actual egg retrieval and the other procedure of doing the transfer implementation. We'll be discussing what goes on in the laboratory as soon as the eggs are brought to the embryologist, how they are handled, and how they are prepped for implantation. You see a lot of videos talking about these procedures, but in this video, we're going to bring you inside and let you see firsthand these procedures. Leading up to the retrieval is a closely monitored regimen of therapy with a dedicated team to assist you in helping you grow numerous healthy follicles. On retrieval day, you will come into Gen 5 Fertility Center's operating room and the doctor will use ultrasound to find each one of the follicles and retrieve the eggs. A lab technician will go through everything collected and count out the eggs that have been retrieved. Here is a video of an actual egg retrieval in progress. Okay, now we're set. I put the ultrasound probe in and I decide which ovary is the best to start with based on things like its position. And in her case, I think the right ovary is perfect and that the image is such that I can see the entire ovary at once. And then you start right in the middle and we're going into the first follicle now. And then you bring the sides of the ovaries to you so you never have to go out to the sides. I like to move the needle a bit. I'm right in the center of the follicle, but I move the needle because that appears to improve the chance of retrieving an egg from that particular follicle. And so I can tell when it's empty, but so can the uh, aspiration assistant. She can tell me when it's done. So in the vast majority, the egg is floating around in the black area because black on ultrasound is fluid. And so as you go into the follicle and you apply suction, then the ovary is drawn into the needle, which you can see in the middle of each follicle. Here at Gen 5, I actually work with four different women who do egg retrievals. And they each do different types of egg retrievals, and they're all really excellent. So we've already gotten multiple eggs. These are very good sized follicles. One of the keys is to make sure that the eggs do not get cold. And so she's holding it, keeping it warm, and then it goes into a heat block so the egg never gets cold. If the egg gets cold, then the fertilization rate and the eventual chance of success falls. Okay. One of the keys to doing these is to minimize the discomfort afterwards. And it's very rare to have any significant discomfort after an egg retrieval. You do everything gently, carefully. When you do it in an optimal way and you do it gently, there's, it's rare to have discomfort afterwards. So you'll notice that I can see the edge of the ovary at all times. And that's very important because there are blood vessels and other things in the pelvis. And uh, one needs to be very careful to avoid any problems with them. So this patient has a significant number of eggs. And as you can hear, the embryologist calls out when they find an egg. 12, 13, 14. And then we have an RN, a nurse in the room, who notes each egg that's found and what follicle it was found in. All right, let's look around and see how many more we have. Several over here look very nice. Perfect. All right, so we're coming to the end of this particular ovary. All right, now we're going to go into this large follicle here. Go right to the center. Again, we can see 
the edge of the ovaries. We can see everything we need to see right here, so it's done in a very safe way. So egg retrievals usually take 10 minutes, something like that, five to 10 minutes. But the length of an egg retrieval depends on the number of follicles that you have to go into. Gonna get this last little one here. We go for any follicle that's roughly 10 millimeters or larger because occasionally you can get mature eggs even from smaller follicles. Anytime you move across the ovary, that's when you're extremely careful with how you do it. So when you go into a follicle, you don't know where the egg is. It could be floating in the liquid material within a follicle or it could be up against one wall or the other. So you can say, see that each follicle takes, let's say five to 10 seconds, something like that. And it appears that this ovary is done. So at the end of a procedure, you always check to make sure that there's no blood in the pelvis that would indicate that there was bleeding during the case and there's absolutely no blood here. She did wonderfully. We're done. The eggs are then brought to the laboratory where the embryologist will inspect each of the eggs looking for the healthiest and most likely to succeed. She then introduces a sperm to impregnate the egg in which the egg starts to divide and creates what is called a blastocyst, where the outer lining of the egg ruptures, allowing cells to escape. At this point, the blastocyst is ready for transfer in which it is implanted into the uterus so the pregnancy can begin. This entire process can be handled in a single day. Each of these procedures, both the retrieval and the implantation, takes approximately 20 minutes with very little stress for the patient. Okay, just lift straight up. Lift your bottom straight up and I'm gonna put a towel under you. You can go back down. And the next thing we're gonna do is put a speculum in so we can find your cervix. And then we're gonna get your cervix in the perfect location. We're gonna get the speculum set up exactly right. And then we'll be ready to clean the, the cervix. So your cervix looks excellent. It does have some mucus on it that we'll clean off because we don't want an embryo to get stuck in the mucus. We will clean any cells, bacteria, viruses, all those things. We'll, we'll get rid of those things because we don't want those things to go inside the uterus because the uterus is sterile. There's nothing in the uterus and we don't want to introduce anything to it. That's part of it. That's an attempt to make sure that there's no significant bacteria that can possibly get into the uterus. So what are we gonna do next? So we're going to put the ultrasound probe in and we're going to look at exactly what we want to do here. So there are different ways of doing transfers, but the way we do it is we put in an outer catheter. We make sure it's in the right position. Then the inner catheter with the embryo in it is brought in. We pass it through the outer catheter into the uterine cavity. And we can see that on the ultrasound. We get it in the right position, then we release it. Aiden and I have already gone through the details, we know exactly where it is that we want to go. We know how we're going to hold the uterus so that it's in an ideal position to easily allow the transfer. With the catheter? Okay, excellent. All right, so now I have the catheter and I'm shaping the catheter to the same shape that the inside of your uterus has because I want it to go in smoothly I don't want it to touch the walls. I don't want it to injure the walls in any way. So we make it exactly the same shape and then we pass it through. And I can tell based on resistance if I'm not in a perfect spot and if I'm not there, I'll make changes to make sure that I am where I need to be. There's the, the catheter. I don't know if you can see it there. It's got a bright white. Move it down a little bit. Again, checking to see where we want to end up. Okay, I like that position. All right, Aiden, go ahead and grab it. Okay, tell her I'm ready. So right now, the embryologist is actually loading the embryo into the inner catheter. Once she comes in, I'll take the end of it and I will place it in my outer catheter. 
she and I have been doing this for many, many years, so we know exactly what the other person does, which is, which is perfect. She's coming in now with that inner catheter. Now I'm placing it into the outer catheter. And then in just a moment, we're going to be able to see it come out. And it should be coming out about right now, and it is. OK, beautiful. You see those two white stripes there? Yep. The embryo is right between those two. And you'll be able to see that better in just a moment. So I wait to make sure that it's in the right position, and it is now. And then I remove the catheter. Perfect. And now it's out. You can see again, you can see those two white lines, one right over the other. See that? Yep. And the ember is right in between. It's right, it's right at the end of the cavity. It's in a perfect position. So you should have a, an outstanding chance of success. She's checking the catheter now because occasionally an embryo will stick in the in the catheter. And in this case, it didn't, so we're good. I'm going to do one last thing. I'm going to put a suppository in. And the reason I put a progesterone suppository in is that progesterone causes the uterine cavity, the uterus, I should say, to soften. Because we don't want any contractions after the embryo is in place. And so I placed the progesterone capsule underneath the cervix. So just take a deep breath and then slowly let it out. I want to make sure it stays in place. And it did. Perfect. All right. You had an outstanding transfer. Great work. Best of luck to you. As I mentioned, you should have an outstanding chance of success. We hope that you enjoyed these videos that showed you an inside look at what we do here at Gen 5 Fertility Center. Your journey to parenthood is our priority. Thank you for entrusting us with this important chapter in your life.